I've always made an awful lot of use of the Council Book for the province of Munster circa 1599 to 1649, which was edited by Marcus Curtis Clayton and published by the Irish Manuscripts Commission in 2008. This is the record of the jurisdiction of the province of Munster, a prerogative jurisdiction, which along with the province of Connacht was administered locally by individuals who were residing and working within Munster to account for the insufficiencies of firm government coming from Dublin Castle around about this time in the later uh, 16th and the early 17th century. Because it relates to prerogative justice, we see a slightly different form of justice than is provided by the central common law courts uh, in Dublin. And one of the many criticisms of these jurisdictions, both at the time and by historians since, is that this justice could sometimes be seen as a sort of a rough justice. Frequently, we see the use of uh, martial law, which is, can be at least a very harsh form of justice if you're on the receiving end of it. The argument in favour of it is sometimes that Ireland is perceived, by some at least, to be so lawless that you need a, a sort of a, an almost a, a get tough on crime approach from the state. And so aspects such as martial law and the widespread use of things like torture can sometimes be used within this period. And we have evidences for these things in the book. I'll read you, if I may, a short excerpt from this. The Lord President and Council are authorised to use tortures and rest by judgment. And it shall be lawful for the Lord, said Lord President and Council, or any two of them, whereof the Lord President to be one, after examination in the causes necessary upon the vehement suspicion and presumption of any great offence by any party committed against the King or to the general disturbance of that province, to put the same party so suspected to tortures as they shall think convenient and as the cause should, cause should require. Now, generally speaking, in the common law systems, a lot of English commentators on the law are very uh, proud of the fact that torture is not something that is used in the common law system. Uh, but here, in the prerogative system of justice, as it is used in Ireland, we have many examples such as this where torture is used. Usually it's probably, we suspect, the use of the rack, stretching people a little bit longer, but we also have some evidence to suggest that a strapado is used. This is hanging somebody from the ceiling with their arms held behind their back. And obviously that does severe damage to your limbs um, and, and, and is itself a, 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 an extremely violent act. Um, it's perhaps worth saying that Irish society at the time can be very violent. And as we see from some of the punishments given to people after conviction, these two are forms of torture where corporal punishment is used, but it's very useful to me as a historian of crime and particularly of punishment to see that before trial can take place, torture is routinely being permitted in Ireland at the time, both at Dublin Castle and also here, as we can see in, in the province of Munster. Other examples of harsh government can also be found in this record. For instance, uh, permissions given to the Lord President of the Council to use martial law, but upon necessity. Whereas also the Lord President hath full power and authority by letters patents under the great seal of this realm to execute the martial law when necessary, shall require in as large and ample manner as to any other hath been accustomed to be granted within this realm. The said Lord President shall have good regard thereto that no use be made of the martial law, but where necessity shall require for the execution thereof is only intended where other ordinary administration of justice by law cannot for the president have for the present have place. Foreseeing always that no person having 40 shillings of freehold or goods to the value of 10 pounds shall be tried by order of the martial law, but that such be left tried to the common law is provided. This is fascinating because it says, if you are wealthy, if you have property, or if you have movable goods worth in this case 10 pounds or property uh, 40 shilling freehold, you will not be uh, facing martial law. But if you are poor, less relevant to the state because of your lack of wealth, you will face martial law. And that can be a crucial factor in whether you live or die in this system in the 17th century. To my mind, details such as this in volumes such as this is a critical uh, facility to write the history of crime and punishment and how the law is administered, but also highlights the very different streams of justice that will be meted out by the state based, it would appear from this document, 
purely on the basis of your wealth and your position within Irish society at the time. <laughs>